Let's talk DJI Action 4 for a minute and why I'm switching from GoPro over to the Action 4. It's because GoPros have kind of lagged behind in the low light department, among other things. I mean, to be fair, this is a Hero 9, not one of the newer ones, but they're not that much better. It's still quite a shocking difference. GoPros are, have always been pretty good, but I think DJI has edged them out a little bit. Enough of that, though. I've done a bunch of testing. I want to front load that. Let's get right into the results. Okay, battery to battery variance was the first thing I tested. Battery 1, I got uh, 98 minutes. Battery 2, 97 minutes. Battery 3, 97 minutes. I then went on to test their 160 minute claim. I went on their website and I looked down in the you know the, the fine print and I seen the settings that they were using. I didn't get 160 minutes. I got 138 minutes. I then tested 4K 60 FPS. I got 72 minutes and it overheated right as the battery died. I then tested 4K 24 FPS. I got 97 minutes, which you can see this is what I used for the battery uh, variance testing because I got another 97 minute result. Uh, no overheating. And then I did the 2.7K 24 FPS. I got 103 minutes, no overheating, and it was noticeably cooler than the 4K. Uh, overheating does not seem to be an issue, at least at the temperatures I was testing at. But if they are, you can definitely go down to 2.7 and it would probably run longer. I did uh, 1080p 24 just because, and I got uh, 115 minutes. Same temp as uh, 2.7K. So overall, I would say really strong results on the batteries. They're reliable from one to another. Uh, I have I didn't run into any overheating issues, although this camera does overheat given a high enough temperature. But as you can see uh, in the test results, that they were being tested at relatively low temperatures. I don't have any like super low sub freezing testing because I, I just wouldn't be very good at that. So let's move on to charging. First thing I tested was, does the battery box charge simultaneously or sequentially? Uh, simultaneous would be ideal, I thought, going into this, but it turns out that it charges sequentially up to 80%. So I'm not going to get into the science behind this, but if you charge up to 80% and then move on to the next battery, you're going to be able to put more juice into more batteries more quickly because that last 20%, the charge rate decreases quite rapidly. So you're, it's just a more efficient way of charging. I really like the way that they've done the charging in the battery box. The battery box charge rate uh, through USB-C, you know, using the proper PD charger was 27 Seven. watts. Battery box charge time for one battery that was complete was uh, 47 minutes. Battery box charge time for three batteries was 57 minutes to 80% on all three, and then 125 minutes to 100% on all three. So you can see in an hour, you're putting a lot of juice into a lot of batteries. And the, the charging is really fantastic on these. I, I cannot say that enough. Uh, camera charge time from 10% to 80%. You know, let's say you're just in the truck. You know, you, you throw it on the charger for a couple minutes here and there. Uh, it did 24 minutes. That is fantastic. And it looks like the average speed was about 10 to 15 watts with a peak of 27. That blows GoPro out of the water. Camera charge time, 0 to 100%. This is in body. Um, I had a bit of an anomaly the first time. It took 64 minutes, so I did three tests. It was uh, 64, 51, and then 51 minutes. So you can you could say probably an hour. See, you can really see the difference here uh, between just charging from 0 to 100 and then just charging up to 80%, you know, or uh, 0 to 80. I mean, that's almost three times the amount of time for not a whole lot more charge. So... The fast charging, fantastic. No complaints. Well, actually, I, I love it. And the last thing we need to talk about is bit rates. I had a bit of a question about this because uh, when I was going through the settings, setting everything up, I wanted to select the highest bit rates, but I, I couldn't. There was no bit rate, at least not that I seen. So it turns out DJI handles things a little bit differently than GoPro. GoPro lets you select standard and high. I haven't gone through extensive testing on the GoPro to know exactly what bit rate they use and everything, but it seems like they pretty much only have like a couple different bit rates they use. So this is... You get a different bit rate depending on the, the resolution and the frame rate that you choose. So at 4K 120, it was a 103 megabit average VBR. That's uh, 9.6 megapixel per megabit per second. We've got 4K 60, 88 megabits per second average VBR, 5.7 megapixels per megabit per second. 
uh, 4K24, 64 megabits per second VBR average. That's 3.1 megapixels per megabit per second. We've got 2.7K24. We've got 38 mega, megabit per second VBR average, 2.6 megapixels per megabit per second. And then 1080p, 24 FPS, 21 megabits per second VBR average, 2.3 megapixels per megabit per second. So the megabit or the megapixels per megabit per second, the lower the number, the higher the quality. So you can see that as you go down, you're technically getting a slightly higher bitrate, even though the bitrate itself is lower. So overall, if none of that means anything to you, I'd say the bitrates are pretty good. Um, I, I don't think they're fantastic. Uh, they could definitely be a little bit better, uh, especially in the, the higher uh, resolution and frame rates. You know, 4K60, average VBR of 88, megab or 88 megabit. Yeah, look, your iPhone's doing less than that. So how much do you really need, you know? I personally like to have a little bit higher bit rate. But it does look pretty good, and I'm not seeing a whole lot of artifacting. Plus, all this was done at uh, you know, H.265, HEVC codec. So... I don't know. It's fine. Could be better. Could be worse. It's fine. Ugh, numbers. Numbers, and I'm not very good at presenting them, so sorry. Anyhow, let's get on to the opinion part of the video. Hey, everybody. Welcome to a beautiful fall day. It's cool, it's crisp, it's slightly windy, which is a good test of microphone cancellation. It's a perfect time to tell you about why I'm switching over to DJI for action cameras after going with GoPro for many years. So, my experience with GoPro is frankly fairly extensive. I, I first got into GoPro around the Hero 4 when I think a lot of people did. I had the 5, I had the 8, I have the 9, and they've all been great, but they've all had that action camera look. You know, it's that wide angle lens with frankly terrible dynamic range. I mean, the sky behind me is probably blown out. If not, it's probably pretty close to being blown out. Kind of weird colors. Well, I shouldn't say weird. They're just slightly shifted. The microphones have always been slightly muffled, but they've been good enough. They're rugged. They're durable. They do what they do. I mean, to be honest, GoPro's known to have some issues, right? Overheating, random crashing. They've got their problems, and I've certainly experienced that. But to be fair, they've gotten better. After the 9, I went to the Hero 11 Mini. It was a little bit cheaper than the main Hero 11 Black, and it was basically the same feature set. It just didn't have any screens on it, which I didn't have a problem with. It's got all the updated software, the fixes. I have had a couple crashes with it, but it's been a lot more solid. But it still has that action camera look to it. You know, it still has that quintessential GoPro sound, you know, that slightly muffled sound. I've just never really been a fan of the GoPro mics. They're not bad, but they're not great. Kind of is what it is. This camera has not really impressed me, though. The dynamic range wasn't that much better. The low light was a little bit better, which was definitely an improvement. But the color shift or cast or whatever, whatever you want to call it was still there. It still had that action camera look, sound, and feel, which, I mean, if you're going for that, great. I mean, GoPro is definitely consistent in that respect, but it's just, ah, the Action 4 is better. The sky behind me might slightly be blown out, but if I were to turn the camera around, you can still see everything. It's exposed here. You can see the blue in the sky. You can see the different shades of gray in the clouds. There's just enough dynamic range in the Action 4 that it gets rid of that action camera look, you know? Plus the color's better. I mean, DJI is no stranger to cameras. They've been in the drone industry for a long time, and they really brung their expertise into the action cam market. I've been resisting the action series for quite some time, but it finally piqued my interest. I bought one. I've had it for, I don't know, about a month at this point. And I, I've never, I'm trying to think of a way to describe my experience with the Action 4 without being extremely hyperbolic, <laughs> you know. Uh, I, I want to be grounded and factual. The Action 4 has been in my pocket pretty much ever since I bought it. And no GoPro I've ever owned has had that experience, that treatment. Like, this really is the perfect pocket camera. It, it, it's still got that wide-angle lens, right, which is part of the, the Action camera look. But all the bad shit's gone. I'm a fan of the Action 4. Personally, I think the Action 4 has more in common with a camera like this. This is a Sony ZV-1F. It's a point-and-shoot that really has video-centric features. 
It's got a bit of a Sony look to it, but I mean, it's fine. The image quality is good. The audio is good. I would say the audio is slightly better than the Action 4 because it resists wind noise a little bit better because it's got a built-in wind muff, which frankly, I think is the only place the Action 4 is really lacking to be a, gr a truly great camera. It needs some kind of a clip-on wind muff. I think the audio from the Action 4 sounds way better than what GoPro has to offer. Okay, maybe not way better, but it, it is better in my opinion, and frankly, the opinion of a lot of other folks. I love the fact that there's two stereo microphones pointing forward. Uh, I've never heard an action camera sound so good. <laughs> this is great. If they got that fixed, I think it might be the best action camera. Well, the most... Uh, it's, it's, the, it's the jack of all trades, right? It's the perfect just throw it in your pocket and record just whatever you want, right? Because the low light's better than what GoPro can do. It's a slightly larger sensor. Does it have the same resolution and sharpness as GoPro? No, it doesn't. I mean, you throw... When you watch the comparisons between like 4K and 5K on YouTube, you really can't see the difference. But locally, I think my GoPro Hero 11 is definitely sharper than the Action 5 or Action 4. I think GoPro just looks a little bit better in proper lighting. But on days like this, where it's cloudy, no. The Action 4 wins in my eyes. Here's the 11 Mini. It doesn't look bad. In fact, it looks pretty good. But I still prefer the Action 4. They're both great cameras. I'm not trying to shit on GoPro. I just like the feature set of the uh, Action 4 and the look of the, the Action 4 better than GoPro now. Just gonna throw this in here real quick. Somehow I forgot to mention the mounting system. The mounting system's totally different, but yet also compatible with GoPro. The, the way that the, the, the DJI system just clips together is superior, in my opinion. It's so much more user-friendly. Is it as uh, robust? No, it's, it's probably not, but it's great. I gotta say, I'm pretty excited to see what DJI does with this line of cameras, but honestly, I'm not sure if I would buy the next one. Like, I'm really happy with the Action 4. I really like the package. I think the only way I would buy the next one is if there was some kind of clip-on mic muff. Because I'm sure you heard it, the wind noise can be a little much. Which is a damn shame because of how good these mics sound. So, thank you for watching. Um, I hope my opinion helped you in your purchasing decision. Have a good day.